This is another episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC, celebrating 40 plus years on the fringe of show business. Stories, interviews, and comedy sets from the famous and not so famous. Here's your host and MC, Scott Edwards. Hello and welcome to this week's show. I hope you've been enjoying the podcast. We've been mixing it up with a combination of interviews and also comedy sets from entertainers that we work with from the 80s and 90s. The interviews, of course, are recent (laughs) uh, for the podcast, but we mix in uh, stand-up material from all the years that uh, we had the comedy club chain, Laughs Unlimited. Uh, This week, I uh, wanted to take it to another level Uh, Some of you may or may not know, but I also produced television shows in the 80s and 90s. We did a one-hour special for Fox. We also did a full 14-show series for the CBS affiliate in the late 80s. And in the early 90s, we did a short 10-episode series for the ABC affiliate here in Sacramento called Live Almost from Laughs Unlimited. Now, what I was going to do in this week's podcast is play the audio portion of that TV show with with minimal editing so that you get a feel of what was happening. Now, not everything comes across on the podcast as it did on the TV show, especially visually, of course. I think you'll get a feel of the energy that was happening live on stage and also came across on the TV show, and I think that will pass through to the podcast. We'll see. If you have comments on... What you've been hearing as far as the uh, historic comedy sets, the interviews, or things I'm doing like this where it's a little bit uh, different, be sure to uh, contact me through the website, www.standupyourhostandmc.com, and let me know what you think. I do want to keep this entertaining for everybody, so your feedback is very important. So the audio version of this show, live almost from Laughs Unlimited from 1991, does feature three terrific comics. One of our local comics, Chris Hobbs, you heard him earlier on a podcast. We also have the stand-up and prop comedy of Bruce Baum. Now this doesn't come across as well through audio only, but Bruce is such a funny comic and was such an important part of our comedy history. I wanted to make sure to showcase him. Very funny guy. Did a lot of music. In fact, at the end of the set, you hear a little p- piece of uh, Marty Feldman Eyes, which was a part of his uh, song and album that did get aired on radio. And closing the TV show and thus closing this podcast is a set from Milt Abel. He's a very funny comic, started off in Los Angeles, now works out of Northern California, and I still work with him today on particular fundraisers and other events. He's a very funny guy and a great friend. At the end of this TV show, we used to do little short interviews with the entertainers, so you'll hear Chris Hobbs and Milt Abel uh, talking with me. We ran this during the credits of the TV show. So anyway, this will be something a little different. As I mentioned, if you have any comments or critique of how this podcast is going or what you think of these unique setups, contact me through the website and let me know what you think. All right. We hope you enjoy this. Something different, some great comedy from back in 1991. Here we go. Would you like to take a laugh? Have a giggle today. Send your troubles away. Say, come on, let's laugh. Just you and me. Oh, what a time it will be. Ha ha, he he, you'll feel better, you'll see. If you just laugh, take a laugh. Have a giggle today. Send your troubles away. Can't you hear me say, come on, let's laugh at laughs unlimited. Hey, now, what do you say? Come on, let's laugh. Laps Unlimited, almost live. Sponsored by the new Y92. Today's hits, yesterday's favorites, 92.5 on your FM dial. And now, here's your host, Scott Edwards. Hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Laps Unlimited, almost live, right here, shot in old Sacramento. You guys having a good time? Yeah. Hey, we've been here a while. We got a great show coming up for you tonight. Our headliners are regular here on Laughs Unlimited from Los Angeles. Milt Abel is here tonight. Let's hear it for Milt Abel. 
Also, ladies and gentlemen, the Laughs Limited flashback later on in the show, but right now, another special treat. A comic who've gone to great expense to fly in from Citrus Heights, California. <laughs> hey, regular here on Laughs Limited, please. A big round of applause, Chris Hobbs, right here, Chris Hobbs. Thanks very much. You guys look very nice tonight, very lovely. I uh, Actually, I was going to try to look good for you, get a haircut today. But what happened, I went up to the beauty salon person, and I said, look, I'm starting to get this receding hairline I'd like to cover up. And she's like, oh no, what you want to do is you want to get a haircut that brings attention to that. You want people to focus in on that. I mean, it's like the same person who would tell Roseanne Barr, oh, wear a half shirt, that'd be good. <laughs> So I'm originally from Sacramento, and I come back all the time. I was recently here for my grandmother's 75th birthday party. And uh, we have one for every year, and it's really fun, except that her friends always come over. Because every year I see them, it's like the same thing every time. You know, they always say the same thing. It's like, my Chris, how you've grown. Boy, you're handsome. I tell you, if I was 30 years younger, they're always so nice, I feel like I should be nice back. It's kind of like, gee, Mabel, you sure have shriveled up. <laughs> But you're really pretty, I tell you, if I was about a hundred years older. <laughs> and every year my grandma complained that she doesn't get good stuff for her birthday. So what I did this year is I saved up all the money that I've made in comedy so far. And I got her a blue velour shirt. <laughs> she was so excited. She walked around the house all day going, dark blue, light blue, dark blue. <laughs> Actually, like, I did get my grandma some pretty good stuff for her birthday. Like, remember those little cars when you were growing up and you used to go, zoom, 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 and then they would just go by themselves? I got her a walker like that. <laughs> it's really great, man. You do it like 50 times. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Drags her right to Kmart. <laughs> and my grandma always says that she never gets any phone calls. So for her birthday, I put one of those how am I driving bumper stickers on her car. <laughs> phone's pretty much ringing off the hook now. <laughs> and my grandma's so happy every time the phone rings now. It's like, hello? Yes, this is the old bag who can't merge. <laughs> She's very happy. So I was watching TV, and you guys, I saw the best TV commercial was for a cockroach spray. And I don't know, their slogan was so cool. Their slogan was, we kill roaches where they live. Isn't that great that they don't go and embarrass them at work? <laughs> and it's so cool. And I was watching TV Sound and Music came on, which is great because I like musicals. I, uh, I think musicals are kind of silly though. You ever watch musicals? They're all kind of the same. There's always like two people just talking. All of a sudden, there's like this huge orchestra from nowhere. And one of the people starts singing to the other person. And the other person doesn't act surprised or anything. <laughs> I mean, just one time after the song, I'd like the other person to say, did you just make that up? Because that is a really good song. I was happy to see that Pee Wee Herman didn't get in much trouble. I think that was pretty great. I uh, was actually comparing what happened to Pee Wee Herman to what happened to Rob Lowe. I don't know if you remember, Rob Lowe got in a little bit of trouble for like sleeping with underage women. But most people in America didn't even care, especially men, because men were thinking, God, I wish I was that guy. <laughs> But with Pee Wee Herman, I think most guys are thinking, I am that guy. <laughs> so, I do want to be in love, though. I love dating. I really want to be in love. You have to admit, love's pretty weird. You know, like, you ever been in love for like a week? And then it just wears off, and that person actually physically changes right in front of you. You know what I mean? You look at that a week later, what used to be this cute little freckle has somehow become this really gnarly mole. <laughs> and that wandering eye is just somehow less exotic. I think, I think the hardest part about love, though, is once you fall and actually tell somebody. Because you really have to open up, you know, reveal stuff about yourself. And it's really hard, you know. It's like, um, honey, when I was six, I accidentally touched my dog's weenie. <laughs> I love you so much. It's just a joke for my act, you guys. I uh, never, you know, actually touched anything. I, uh, I mean, I may have, you know, brushed up against it a couple times <laughs> while slow dancing, but. 
God, some of you are laughing. Thanks a lot. <laughs> some of you just keep giving me this blank stare like you're having some kind of weird John Denver nightmare or something. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I said that, you know what I said that last show? This lady actually stood up in the back. She said, John Denver? Oh, no, 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 no. He's much more masculine than you are. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Well, she wasn't laughing later in the parking lot when I was beating her up, I'll tell you that. <laughs> anyway, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Hobbs! We'll be right back with more Common and Mill Table right after this. Okay, right now I'm going to interrupt the TV show to explain a couple things. On that show, of course, there was actually TV commercials that were interrupting and breaking up the show. And we also had uh, put in some sections to represent the history of the club. Now, this was in 1991, and we'd already been open over 10 years, and so we were showcasing some of the material and comics from the uh, 80s decade of comedy at Laughs Unlimited. So this next short section features a very, very funny and close friend, Bruce Baum. Now, you may recognize the name, Baby Man Bruce Baum, not only worked clubs all over the country, but was seen often on television. And he came out with a record that featured a hit single, Marty Feldman Eyes, that was a takeoff of a popular song. And I think uh, you'll hear a little bit of that at the end of this on the TV show. And then we go into our headliner. So I'll just do this one interruption to explain how uh, Bruce Baum ended up on this TV show and why it sounds a little bit different than the rest. Well, we hope you're enjoying this unique version of the podcast. Here we go, the very funny Bruce Baum. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're in a fix, when you're in a bind, there's only one crime fighter to call, and that's Baby Man! accidentally breastfed for 26 years. <laughs> We're not talking about that, man. Caved <laughs> wussy. We're not even talking about Superman, the blue panty kisser. <laughs> We're not even talking about the flying heroine, Wonder Woman. <laughs> God damn it, DC 10 tits. <laughs> Those guys. Went over to that Hare Krishna temple. Went over to that Hare Krishna temple and tried to sell them some airline tickets. <laughs> you know, people come up to us all the time and they say, Bruce. <laughs> so how can you guys do everything nice and easy? And we say, hey! <laughs> Whenever we think it's an easy, we would mention the rough. Ready, girls? <laughs> our headliner tonight, one of the funniest guys. He's been working here a long time, and he's a tad bitter about it. But anyway, he's from Los Angeles, California. Very, very funny. Please welcome a good friend of ours, Mel Table, right here. Mel Table! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that applause. Uh, that's encouraging. Thank you. I'm stoked. Um, actually, it's good to be here. I'm glad to be away from home. I do not sleep well at home. Uh, my neighbors have a rooster that is blind. <laughs> it has no idea when the sun rises, takes shots at it all night long. <laughs> cock a <-dock>, oh. <laughs> <clears throat> I do have some good news. I recently got married. Thank you very much. 
plant a monastery here. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. We, uh, we had a lovely outdoor ceremony, except for the sniper. It's her dad with a BB gun. I'm gonna do it, quit popping me, damn it. Uh, actually, we weren't sure what kind of ceremony we wanted. She wanted some sort of sacrifice. We settled on my lifestyle. It's morally wrong to judge. Uh, and, uh, well, you know, and we did a lot of traditional things. You know, I'll tell you something. I was a little nervous about that ceremony because you know why I was nervous? They asked the guy first. So, uh, you know, my wife had a tremendous potential to make me look incredibly stupid in front of everybody. <laughs> you take this woman to death, you part? I do. And you take him? No way! <laughs> Uh, but things went well. We did a lot of traditional things. She threw who bouquet to a bunch of her single lady friends who fought over that thing like an NBA rebound drill. <laughs> I shot her guard at a bunch of my single guy friends and they would not touch that thing. <laughs> they ducked out of the way and hit the ground in front of them. They just kicked it around like it was a dead snake. Look at, Look at that thing there. That's a garter snake there. That's what that is. Look at that. I think it's closer to you. <laughs> We had a nice uh, honeymoon, went to the Caribbean, two weeks. Got a tremendous sunburn. Brown hair, pink body, white butt. <laughs> I look like Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> Big scoop with two legs. But I'm glad to have that dating thing behind me, boy. Dating's tough, isn't it? Duh. Um, I think the worst experience I had dating was one night I spent the night with this gal. That's not the bad part. Uh, but the first night I was with her, she got a phone call about two o'clock in the morning. She goes, oh, hi, Liz, I can't talk right now, I'm busy. No, I'm not going to tell you who it is, guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not them. <laughs> oh, I wish, no. <laughs> I gave her a gift certificate to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Another cool gift, beanbag chairs to grandparents. <laughs> they never come out, I'm going to be noticed. They're like Venus flytraps to grandparents. <laughs> Grandma looks like a turnover turtle in there. Just, oh, 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 oh. Somebody roll her over. Rub her belly, she'll fall asleep. Beanbag chairs. You know, you know what my favorite piece of furniture is? And it has been, even since I was a kid, I love this piece of furniture, the sofa bed, that bed inside of a couch. I thought that was, as a kid, I thought that was neat. Now I know why. It's transformer furniture. <laughs> I'm a bed. I'm a couch! <laughs> you know, I did something that only kids do, and I felt so stupid about it. I left my jacket. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was up in Canada. I left my jacket during the course of the day. Just forgot it. Abandoned. Completely forgot about it. Remember as a kid, you do this? Major article of clothing? Just left somewhere. Come home. Billy, where's your jacket? <laughs> and we don't do this as adults, do we? Thompson, we got that sales presentation. Why don't you get your jacket? <laughs> you came to the office with the jacket. I did. I don't know where it is. I want to go home right now. There's something we do as adults we didn't do as kids. We grunt more as we get older. Have you noticed that? <laughs> you grunt on more occasions anyway. Sure. You would never see a six-year-old kid grunt to pick something up, but are those my marbles? Huh. <laughs> 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 I'm never dropping those again. <laughs> Gee, I think I pulled a muscle playing tag this morning. <laughs> I remember to warm up. I'm not five anymore. Ah, you know, after breakfast, I just want to take a nap. I just want to... <laughs> no, leave those cartoons on. I'm watching that. <laughs> <laughs> Who threw this in my mouth? <laughs> Almost fell asleep there. I've been, I've been having trouble sleeping, uh, the rooster, and my wife told me recently that I yelled out in the middle of my sleep. What a scary thought that your vocal cords will betray you when you're unconscious. <laughs> the money's buried underneath the bird bath. What was that again? <laughs> I'm worried about it because my dad has tremendous sleep disorders. Uh, narcolepsy, that disease we fall asleep for no apparent reason. 
Yeah, I had a professor in college as a carrier. Uh, <laughs> so my dad went to a dream research center, or at least he thinks he did. Um, my dad and I are going to be better friends. I did not get along that well with my dad because he did all the disciplining. It wasn't fair. You know, I hope you parents out there split it up. Because it wasn't fair. I'd get in trouble with my mom and say, wait until your father gets home. I'd rather not. <laughs> and it wasn't fair. My dad would come home and say, hi, son. I'm seeing you all day. Got to beat you. <laughs> you still love her, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cherish every visit. And what was the logic in this when parents would say, you could have hurt yourself. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Well, thanks for taking the chance out of it. <laughs> What's the point? What's the point of when you're running out of gas to lean forward in the car? <laughs> what good does this really do? I'm cutting down the wind resistance. <laughs> Here, this will help him like a knife right now. This is... <laughs> Superman does this. I'm a super saving gas guy now. I don't know, maybe you're thinking I'm this much close to the gas station. <laughs> if I could climb on that hood, I'd probably make it. Driving is an expensive thing. Auto insurance, doesn't auto insurance take everybody off in this room? Yeah. You know what the problem is? We look on accidents these days as fortune rather than misfortune, and we're all suffering from that attitude. It really ticks me off. These people have these bumper stickers that say, hit me, I need the money, take your car away. <laughs> I'm paying a couple thousand dollars a year for auto insurance. I live in LA, apparently LA is second only to Beirut in risk. <laughs> and it gets worse, I have a thousand dollar deductible. I pay the first thousand dollars to fix my own car. It's just gonna cause more accidents. If somebody just dings me, I'm gonna say, stay right there, buckle up, I gotta get my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well that's my show. Thanks very much, you guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bill Table, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back um, with more of Chris Hobbs and Bill Dable right after this important message. Unlimited Almost Live has been brought to you by the new Y92. Listen to Paul and Phil every weekday morning on 92.5 FM. And now, back to your host, Scott Edwards. Hey, hey. welcome back to the show. We're having a good time. Let's hear from Bill Dable and Chris Hobbs. Yeah. They do a great job. Come on. Milt, thank yeah. you very much for being a part of the show. Oh, well, it was certainly my treat, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> they, had, uh, they wrote down a couple uh, questions for me. It says, uh, what temperature does hydrogen liquefy? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, Let me tell you this other one. Who was right. the Secretary of Defense under Woodrow Wilson? She was? Scott, I think you got the wrong questions there. Uh, oh, 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 mine, mine oh, are at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, oh I, yeah. I'm sorry, see right here. I was afraid I'd get uh, them wrong. Do you <laughs> like large breasts on women? Yeah, those are mine. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, yes. Uh, total setup. I, I do. <laughs> it uh, works. Not, I don't have to drag it out. Uh, yeah, there. It's nice. So you know. How uh, many breasts do you like in a woman? <laughs> oh, whatever they come with. <laughs> and what about Woodrow Wilson? What about? Oh, you know. And his secretary. That's what I want to know. Hey, I'm a happily married man. Although my wife has a black belt in pout. Uh, but <laughs> in pout, in pout, yeah. She's kind of well, when she gets mad, she doesn't yell. She gets much worse. Gets quiet. You know, you can just feel the heat coming off their body. You come in there and go, gee, it wasn't this warm outside. <laughs> <laughs> she must be ticked. Uh, well, so. and then Chris, great set. You, you've been. Now, did you ever get a day job, or did you ever have a day job, or you'd been? I used to have a day job. It's pretty swinging funny. this way. I kind of lost it. Maybe you can. Like, you ever done this, you guys? I'm sure you have. You ever work? You're like in a back room storage area, you know, somewhere private, and you're shooting up heroin. Yeah. And someone walks in on you, you try to play it off by saying something like, oh, Hey, man, do I suck at darts or what? <laughs> no, that never happened to me. But, uh, that only happened once. That's uh, it. Are, are you uh, dating anyone now? Uh, not really. I'm kind of a lull right now. Oh, I wanted to say it's nice to see you back in men's clothing. Oh. That's very good. <laughs> That's uh, not nice, is it? wonderful. <laughs> it's better every year, like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the classics, don't you? Sure. They're very good, sure. <laughs> so who are you dating? Uh, That's I don't know. Question. Everyone's trying to help me out. All my friends give me advice, you know? It's just, uh, they have no advice for me at all. Well, what kind of advice are they giving you? Well, I say, like, you know, Christian, you meet women, go up to a woman who smokes, ask her for a cigarette. I mean, first of all, you know, Makes how do you know I love women with yellow teeth who hack and wheeze a lot? Ah! Uh. <laughs> Thanks. Like you're, if you're laughing, thanks a lot, because usually there's like a woman in the back just going, that's not funny. 
I think she's right over there. She's very uh, pretty. <laughs> Why do you have your dick? It's my wife. Well, that's good. Thanks, man. <laughs> Is that your wife? Yeah. There you go. As you tell, she's kind of quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's my ex-wife, right? So, okay. Now, you, you told me that you do comedy to, to meet people. Sure I do. Uh, one of my favorite lines is I seem to look around the... I say, excuse me, I seem to have lost my morals here somewhere. <laughs> 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 it kind of works. But that's behind me. I'm married. Now, right? hey. Very happily married. I've got a really sweet wife. Uh, is she here? I heard she was here. Yeah, she is here. She's back there wheezing. <laughs> <laughs> That was Chris Hobbs and Milt Abel in a doing a, a little sit-down interview at the end of the TV show, live, almost, from Laughs Unlimited, a 1991 television production I produced. And we hope you enjoyed this audio version of the show. It was something a little different, but I thought it'd be interesting for you, the podcast listener. Hey, we hope you uh, have been enjoying all the various shows, interviews, and comedy sets that we've been featuring on the podcast. Be sure to let us know what you think. Share it rate it, and we look forward to uh, having you listen next week. There's a new show each and every Sunday. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Stand Up Comedy, your host and MC. For information on the show, merchandise, and our sponsors, or to send comments to Scott, visit our website at www.standupyourhostandmc.com. Look for more episodes soon and enjoy the world of stand-up comedy. Visit a comedy showroom near you.